So this is how this group got started. I don't think I've ever shared how this group got started. So uh, uh, here, was the, here was the situation. Uh, it was around uh, 2010. We just had a 10-year run of uh, doing uh, seminars around the country and uh, uh, monthly phone seminars and things like that. And we'd co I'd come into a city and do a, a one-day uh, sales seminar. And half the time, we'd do another day where we, for sales managers. And i go from city to city. We'd go around the country. And we had, uh, we had national associations co-sponsor co it. It was a big deal. And uh, that was, it, it was, it was uh, you know, it was the, uh, how we generated income. I had a period in uh, 2009 or 2010, that we're talking about that time period, uh, where I, was, I did uh, 23 cities in 40 days, never came home. That was, I mean, that was the world I was in at that point. So, um, you know, the crash, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, real estate crash, it took us a while for that to catch up with us because I had a couple, I had a couple of Fortune 500 companies who, uh, who were used me exclusively, and they kind of got us through, you, you know, the crash. But around 2010, they, had, they decided they were going to pull everything inside. Both of them did. And so um, the, the, the downturn in the economy was catching, catching up with us. And um, uh, the, the registration, so in two, uh, the end of 2010, we, we actually canceled a couple uh, cities, a couple seminars. We'd never done that in 10 years, have never canceled one. We canceled it, and so, uh, and speaking engagements were decreasing, and uh, man, business business was uh, was looking bad, and, uh, two, uh, and we, were, we were at that point down about 80%, believe it or not. And um, at that time, I had, uh, I had contracted with a group to be uh, intercessors for the business. This, this is called Wise Ministries, W-I-S-E, and I paid them, paid them monthly to pray for the business. And uh, the way it worked is I would have a monthly phone call with Charles, who was the guy who ran it, and then I would send weekly, I would send weekly prayer requests, uh, and uh, they would be delivered to one of their intercessors who would pray for those things in a, in a conversational prayer and record uh, record the prayers and whatever he or she uh, felt they got they got from the Lord back and sent it back to me. So we had this two way communication going, and then once a month I'd have a conversation with with uh, Charles. So it's getting to the point 2000, 2011 where uh, I mean business is terrible. I mean I'm, I have to lay people off, and uh, I mean we just have we have nothing, and uh, and I. Uh, I remember uh, I, had a, I did have a speaking engagement in San Antonio, and they were in Austin. And uh, Charles said, why don't you come down to Austin and, and just spend a day with us as long as you're nearby? And I said, okay. So the way it worked out, you know, I came in a day early or something like that and went down and spent a day with Charles and Elizabeth, who is his wife, and in the ministry with him. And, and uh, you know, we had, a, we had a nice day, but uh, towards the end, in the end, afternoon, we had a time of very intense prayer. And, um, and, and it, was, it really was an intense time of prayer. And when it was over, Elizabeth had, who, who was quiet the whole time, she had drawn uh, something out, a, an illustration on a piece of paper. Now, I have that, and I'm going to try to put it on the screen here. Hold on just a second. Can you, can you see that? Can you see part of that illustration? Yep, okay. Okay, so it's, it's going to be a little difficult to do this, but uh, so here's, because it's, it's uh, I don't, I don't know that I can get it back the other way. But anyway, so here's a city, a town. Here's a road. You see this road? Uh, and here's a little guy, a little stick figure. He's got a cap on. It looks like a knight. And, and she wrote the words. This is, this, is what, this is what Elizabeth wrote, did during our prayer time. After we're done, she said, I have a word from the Lord for you. This is it. It's contained on this document. What she got from the Lord to say to me during this prayer time. So, so here are the words, and the first word says, a knight in shining armor. And then, so the road, the road continues, and it says, connect you with other knights in shining armor. Um, don't lose heart. Over here, now the road, see the road comes up to the edge of the page, does a 180 degree turn, it goes back the other way. And he said, uh, here it says, uh, a, a change is coming soon. A change in direction is coming soon. So, so there's a change in direction. Now the road goes back this way. And here at the top of this, it said, uh, basically, God is preparing a people 
for you to impact and impart to, impart to and impact. Uh, God will bring you to your destination. These will be significant people. And then, and then you see the road goes, and here is a city that's much, much, you know, better and, and more ornate and so on. And up here you can see the date. I don't know if you can see it. It says October 2011. Can you see that? Okay, so, so that's, the, uh, that's the document. And uh, so basically that's what she shared. God, is, God sees you. This is what she said. And she got this, the, this word in the spirit text. God sees you as a knight in shining armor, like, I don't see me like that, you know, but God's going to connect you with other knights in shining armor. Don't lose heart. God's got this whole thing. A sudden change, a turn of events is going to come, and God is going to connect you and is preparing a people for you to impact and impart to. These will be significant people. Okay, so, that, so, so she shared all that with me, and I said, okay, uh, and I took this piece of paper, and it occurred to me, uh, as I was thinking about it, that there's no, there was no to-do list here. There's nothing for me to do. Uh, God's going to do it all. So, so I, you know, I, 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 well, I shared it with Colleen when I got back and so on and, and shared it with a couple other people, and I just put it in the drawer. And honestly, after a while, I forgot about it. So now, so this is towards the end of 2011, and uh, we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm at my wits end trying to do something to resurrect the business. So we said, let's do, you know what? We do know how to do seminars and okay, we we're just pull out all the stops. Let's, let's create one and see if we can't just resurrect this whole thing. And so we, uh, you know, we did all the research and we knew what cities were, I, I was best, follow, you know, I had more followers in which were good in. And so we, we decided on Dallas I'm going to do three seminars in Dallas, and we, we did everything, you know, as far as promotion. We did pay-per-click. We did uh, postcard advertising. We got the National Association. We, I mean, we did the whole thing, everything to promote this. We were expecting, we, we, had, we had a budget of 465 uh, paid registrations. You know how many we got? <laughs> One. <laughs> And I thought, oh, that's got being, uh, you know, sense of humor, you know, like, like, this is supernatural. We are not this bad. You know, we've been doing this for 10 years. We know how to do this. We are not this bad. God is stepping into this thing and saying, Kale, you're done with this. I got it. You know, I said, okay, I'm done. And um, that was, uh, that was June, 2012. I said, well, what am I going to do? And um, I thought, you know, when I, when I first started my consulting practice, the one thing I, that really got it kicked off more than anything else was I did CEO roundtables. And I, I, had, I had four or five of them going locally in Grand Rapids where people would pay and we'd meet together and a CEO roundtable, much like this. And I really enjoyed it and I knew how to do it and I knew I was good at it and I knew I could do that. And the reason I stopped is because I started traveling so much in the speaking engagements. I couldn't make a regular meeting, you know. So uh, I thought, well, let me, I, I, should, I should reinvigorate the CEO roundtables. And I looked around and said, I want to do them as a Christian, though. So I looked around and I found, uh, I found uh, national groups of CEO roundtables and, I, you know, C12 and Convene and things like that. And I, and I applied and went through the, the uh, application process and, and all of that. And uh, uh, one of them, uh, so there were three that I, that I applied to, C12 convene and truth at work. And the guy truth at work said, you know, we're having a, we're having an annual meeting. Why don't you come down and hang around in the annual meeting, just get a taste of things. So I said, okay. So I went down to Indianapolis and spent a day with them and then drove back. And I thought, you know what, this is it. This is, this is what, this is the turn of events. These guys who I just met, the other chapter presidents is what they're called are the, are the other knights in shining armor that God's going to connect me with. And uh, he's, he's going to pull together a group of, uh, of significant people. And uh, we're going to do, we're going to do round tables. And um, that was in uh, 2012. Took uh, the, at the end of 2012, got the first group going and the second group uh, at the beginning of 2013. And uh, of course we were truth at work for a number of years. And then we, uh, 
uh, severed that relationship for lot, lots of different reasons. And now it's, it's called CBIG, Christian Business Impact Groups. And that's how this whole thing came to be. God, God said, Kale, you're done with the seminars. I want you doing this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull together a group of significant people. That's you guys. And you're going to impact and impart to them. And that's what I have for you. And that's what happened. That's my God thing. 